Duke of Joe here. Today we're going to take a look at this game, Brotherhood and Unity, War in Bosnia and Herzegovina, 1992-1995, a game designed by Tomislav Cipcik and published by Compass Games in 2020. Now this is meant to be a three-player game. There's a two-player version, but uh, I think to capture the essence of the game you need three players because it's three competing factions within Bosnia and Herzegovina. you got the Serbians, the Croatians, and the Bosniaks. This is a card-driven game, and each of the sides has its dedicated set of strategy cards. Now, what called my attention to this game is, first, the nature of the conflict. I know very little about it, even though it is relatively recent. Second, it is a card-driven game, and I really like card-driven games. And third is just the situation that the game presents. You see here that the map shows Bosnia Herzegovina, and you see in the outer portions of the map what is called uh, foreign spaces, which is Croatia, Yugoslavia. And this is a civil war, and the one interesting aspect is that supply in this game is not traced into Bosnia. Herzegovina, but outside of Bosnia Herzegovina. So uh, the Serbians, the Croats, and the Bosniaks have to trace supply to certain spaces outside of Bosnia Herzegovina. For example, the Croats trace supply to these spaces that are labeled CRO in Croatia. And uh, curiously, the Bosniaks also trace supply to those very same spaces, and Croats and Bosniaks can use even the same supply paths, even if they're at war with each other. So you have that particular situation going on. The Serbians, on the other hand, they trace supply to these spaces labeled YUG, Yug in Yugoslavia. And uh, these spaces outside of Bosnia-Herzegovina provide unlimited supply, so you can supply an unlimited number of units through these spaces. Now, what happens if units cannot trace supply to these outside spaces? Then you have to check if the units can trace supply to key spaces that they control. And key spaces can provide supply to three units. Key spaces are those that have their name in red capital letters. Here you see the province of Jushna Krajina, and uh, below the name, you see there's a number three. That means that to control the province, a side has to have control of at least three spaces. And you see that the Serbs start in control of three spaces. Uh, you see they have Makornic Grad, Shipovo, and Mliniste. But they don't control the province because of the asterisk that you see there. The asterisk means that among those three spaces, the side has to control a number of key areas denoted by the asterisk. And the key area in Jushna Krajina is Jaiste. And that begins in control of the Croats. And that's why no one controls that province or that region at the beginning of the game. But let's suppose that at some time the Serbs gain control of Jaiste, then we place a Serbian control marker to indicate that now the region is under Serbian control. And the effect of this is profound because not only do the Serbs gain the number of strategic will points stated there, which is four, but the Croats, you see their symbol there to the left of the control marker, uh, they lose, they suffer a penalty of four strategic will points because Jushna Krajina is also a key region not only for the Serbs but for the Croats. And uh, there's 15 of these regions on the map and uh, each region has a different number of strategic will points and uh, indicates which factions uh, are vying for control of the region because the region is a key region. So you're going to have strategy defined by uh, the number of strategic will points that each region provides, but there's more problems to worry about in this game, and especially those have to do with supply. Because as you can see from uh, a glance at the map, there's no fronts in this game. You see uh, units from different factions 
uh, sparsed out around the map in various, let's say, pockets. And you see, for example, in the northwest, you see uh, that there are Serbian units there. But those Serbian units also are uh, unsupplied. Here we see that the Serbian units in Sapadna Krajina, as well as those in Jushna Krajina, and also in Bozanska Krajina and Sieverna Bosna, cannot trace supply to any Yugoslav space. So they can only avail themselves of limited supply. And with limited supply, each key space can only supply three units. So you won't be able to uh, amass a great army in those areas. So uh, at the beginning of the game, the Serbians are hard pressed to connect those areas to areas that can trace unlimited supply. And that's the situation that you have here around Posavina, that region starts uncontrolled, but you can see that the Bosniaks have control of two key spaces there, Berceko and Tuzla. And uh, the Serbs need to punch a hole in those lines. And they have units here in this province, this region, Semberija, in order to connect uh, those regions or those spaces with their uh, brothers here in the north and northwest so that they can be fully supplied. Now, fortunately for the Serbs, at the beginning of the game, in the first turn, they have a hand of seven cards compared to five cards for the other factions. And they receive 10 uh, brigades as reinforcements in the first turn. And then the Bosniaks are caught off guard and there's this uh, penalty in combat, attack or defense. In the first turn, they suffer a minus two die roll modifier. In the second turn, they suffer a minus one die roll modifier. But notice that this uh, advantage that the Serbians have at the beginning of the game starts to vanish pretty quickly. In the second turn, they receive no reinforcements, even though they still have a hand of seven cards. But in the third turn, their hand is reduced to six with no reinforcements. And you have the same situation in the fourth turn. So uh, the Serbians have the pressure of time against them. So they must try to win this game early on, or you will see uh, their power dwindling and then just uh, playing a defensive game. Let's take a look at how this game is won. There are three ways to win. If at any time any player reaches his side's victory conditions and the player controls all of the side's key areas, that player immediately wins. And what is each player's victory conditions? For the Serbians, it, it is reaching 71 strategic will points for the Croatians, 16 for the Bosniaks, 55. Now, if that doesn't happen, but any of the players reaches a strategic will score of zero or a foreign attitude score of minus seven, that player immediately surrenders. And we calculate the victory score for the remaining two players with victory going to the highest scorer. Now, if none of these two situations happen, and we played the last turn of the game, we calculate the victory score for each of the three players with the highest scoring player winning the game. And the way the victory score is calculated is we take the initial factor, which is zero for the Serbs, 11 for the Croats, and 16 for the Bosniaks, and we add the strategic will value of all areas under a player's control. We subtract the strategic will value of all non-controlled key regions for that player. And then we subtract five times the intervention level. Now let's take a look at an example with the Bosniaks. In this example, the Bosniak player has a strategic will score of 40, but doesn't control the Bosniak key region of Podrinje, which is worth five strategic will points. And is at intervention level two. So we start with 16, the initial factor for the Bosniaks, plus 40 for the strategic will points controlled by the Bosniaks, minus five because the Bosniaks 
don't control their key region of Podrinje, and minus 10 because the Bosniak intervention level is at 2, for a total of 41 victory points. Now, as stated before, the map is divided into regions, 15 regions, and one of these regions is not represented in the main map. You see there that there's this uh, rectangle there that says Sarajevo map because there's an insert map on the board to represent the areas in Sarajevo. And let's take a look at it. Here we see the insert map of Sarajevo, 14 areas, and you can see that the uh, Serbians practically surround the Bosniaks who have control of these three key areas inside Sarajevo, Novigrad, Novo Sarajevo, and Centar. And there are four of these key areas in the map. The fourth is controlled by the Serbians here, Vogoshka. And to control Sarajevo, the Serbs need to control eight spaces, which they already control, but they have to control all four key spaces. So uh, the Serbs will have uh, uh, motive here, uh, strong motive to try to deprive the Bosniaks of 14 strategic will points. But note that Sarajevo is only a key region for the Bosniaks. So that means that the Bosniaks have to try to hold on because if not, they will suffer a minus 14 strategic will point penalty. And of course, the uh, Bosniaks in Sarajevo are unsupplied. They cannot trace supply to any outside unlimited supply source. So they are limited to the supply that the key spaces can provide. Each key space can provide supply to three units and they have two units in, in each space. So they can supply up to nine units. Of course, that limits the uh, growth of units there, the buildup of their forces. And that's something that the Serbians can take advantage of. From afar, it's hard to figure out where Sarajevo is on the map. So I did uh, add labels to this little uh, wooden block here. And we will place it where uh, Sarajevo is, that rectangle, so that at all times, when we're showing the main map, you can uh, figure out where Sarajevo is, because obviously Sarajevo is the largest city in Bosnia-Herzegovina and it is important to determine victory. Now, before we start with the uh, playthrough in the tutorial, let's take a look at the situations that are present at the beginning of the game in each of the regions. Here we have the map included in one of the player aids for this game. I find this player aid very informative, easy to understand. It shows you each of the 15 regions and uh, to which of the factions this a particular region is a key region. And those that are key regions only for the Serbs are in solid yellow. Those that are key regions only for the Croats are in blue. And those that are key regions only for the Bosniaks are in green. And some regions are key regions for two of the factions. Like, for example, here in Podrinje, which is a key region for the Bosniaks and the Serbs. So we will start taking a look at the regions on the map and their particular situations. And we will start with Kasinska Krajina. Here we see Kasinska Krajina. It is a region in the northwest of Bosnia-Herzegovina. It starts in control of the Bosniaks. And you see the control marker there. And it is a key region for Bosniaks and Serbians. The Serbians have control of one of its spaces, and that is Bozanski Novi. The Bosniaks cannot trace supply to an unlimited source, so they are limited in supply by the supply that the sole key space in the region can provide, Bihać, which is three. It can supply three units, and there are already two Bosniak units there. Now, uh, the Serbians cannot trace supply to an unlimited source. These spaces that you see there, labeled KRA, are spaces where uh, Serbian allies, foreign allies, appear. Uh, and they are not spaces from which the Serbians can trace supply. 
So uh, you'll see that the Bosniaks are pretty isolated in Kasinska Krajina, the neighboring regions start in control of the Serbians. Now let's take a look at the regions of Sapatna Krajina and Bozanska Krajina. Here we see the two regions. Each of these regions is only a key region for the Serbians. All units in these regions cannot trace supply outside of Bosnia and Herzegovina, so they have to trace supply to a key space. And we see key spaces in Sanski Most and also in Banja Luka. So those spaces can provide each supply for three Serbian units. Let's take a look at the situation in Severna Bosna and Posavina. Here we see that uh, Severna Bosna is in control of the Serbs at the beginning of the game. It cannot trace supply to an unlimited source. The next province, Posavina, begins in control of none of the factions. You have uh, units from all three factions controlling one of the region's key spaces. You have Croats controlling Bozanski Broad, and right next to that space is a Croatian unlimited supply source space. So the Croatians can trace unlimited supply into Bozanski Broad and the other space that they control there, Derventa. On the other hand, the Serbs control the key space of Doboj, and the Bosniaks control the key space of Berceko. Let's take a look now at the situation in Soli and Semberija. Here we see that Soli starts in control of the Bosniaks, and they have two brigades in that region's sole key space, Tuzla. Semberija starts uncontrolled even though the Serbs have four brigades in the region. They control enough spaces, three, to control the region, but they don't control the second key space in the region, and that is Srebrenica, which starts under Bosniak control. Luckily for the Serbs, they can trace unlimited supply into Semberija. So at the beginning of the game, that is probably one of the things they want to deal with, those Bosniak units that are behind their lines. Now let's take a look at the situation in Podrinje and also Istochna Herzegovina. Podrinje starts under Bosniak control, but they only have one brigade in its key space of Gorashte. And unfortunately for the Bosniaks, the Serbians can uh, trace unlimited supply into any space in Podrinje, so they have a, a very high incentive to clear that area of Bosniak forces. Podrinje also is adjacent to Sarajevo, and uh, it is a key region for Serbs and Bosniaks. Further to the south, we have the region of Istochna Herzegovina, which starts in firm control uh, by the Serbians. And you see that it is adjacent to Sapadni Herzegovina, which has a Croat and Bosniak presence there. Let's take a look now at the situation in Siev Herzegovina and Srednia Bosna. Siev Herzegovina starts uncontrolled. It is a key region for the Bosniaks. It is also adjacent to Sarajevo. And Srednia Bosna is a key region for Bosniaks as well as Croats. And you can see there's a, a significant military presence at the beginning of the game by both sides there. The Bosniaks control uh, the key space of Senisa. Meanwhile, the Croats control the other key space, which is Bugoino. Now let's take a look at the starting situation in Tropolje. Here we see the starting situation in Tropolje. It is under Croat control and it is a key region only for the Croats. It has a connection with uh, uh, space Sinji in Croatia, which provides unlimited supply. So it is an easily 
uh, supplied province for the Croatians. There is Serbian presence in Glamoc, but not much else. Here we see how is it that the Serbians can trace supply to an unlimited source from Sarajevo, and that is by way of Sokolak, Sokolas. Sokolas. Here we see how the Serbs can trace supply to an unlimited source from Sarajevo, that is by way of Sokolas, Vlasenica, Svornik, and Los Nisa, which is in Yugoslavia. But it is a very tenuous route and uh, the Bosniaks could easily cut that supply route with their forces from Srebrenica and other forces in Soli. So that's the situation at the beginning of the game in each of the 15 regions. And that's where this video ends. In the next video, we'll go through one full turn of brotherhood and unity as described in the game's tutorial. I include a link to the tutorial in the description below in case you want to follow along. So I hope that this video and the next one give you an idea of the flow of the game and what the game has to offer. This is Stuka Joe signing off for now. Thanks for watching.